close call. <laughs> it's time for another bike build. You've already seen me paint this beautiful bike frame, haven't you? Well, if not, check out the link in the video description below. It's time to put it all together to a really nice bike. I'm gonna build it with a complete Shimano 105 R7000 disc group set. Some China carbon parts, like these uh, ball cages, really nice and neat. The Cell Italia SLR Superflow Boost Carbon Evo cell. That's a long name, <laughs> but it's a very nice cell. The Swalbo 1 tubeless ready, 10 side wall, 25 millimeter tires. Those are gonna look absolutely great on this bike, I'm sure of that. I will use my Favero Asioma Duo power pedals. Those are not brand new, they've been with me for a while. Then finally we have the ICANN Aero 50 disc wheels, of course, that I've also done an unboxing video on. So check it out in the description below as well. That's pretty much it, let's get started. Now I'm gonna start out with the cable routing and there are a few reasons for that. To begin with, <laughs> it's the most boring and annoying part of the whole build. So let's just get it over with, yeah, let's get it done. And the second part, it's about access, getting into the bottom bracket and really reach all this. If you have the bottom bracket there, if you have the brake calipers in place and stuff like that, it's simply harder to reach. Before we start the cable routing, I will attach the seat post so that we can clamp the frame properly. So I have this really nice, it's a Chinese carbon post. It's very, very light. I've got an itch I can't scratch. I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me and open wounds start to see. Everybody come here, gather round. Welcome to the freak show, the best in town. <laughs> What the hell? To route the cables, it's very important to see where they start. You see, the wires have this little knob on it. And if you start to route it down the frame directly, you will hear some pretty nasty words coming out of this workshop. Oh, damn it! Yeah, because I would have to do it all over again. So, in order to route the cables, I first have to thread them through the lever. And in this case, I have internal cable routing on my handlebar, so I have to thread them through there. And in order to fix the handlebar, I have to mount the fork. And in order to mount the fork, I have to mount the headset. But before I mount the headset, I will do something that I've never done before. I'm gonna cut the stereo tube. I haven't ridden a bike before, so I don't know how long the stereo tube needs to be. So in order to get possibilities to make adjustments in the future, I will use a couple of spacers, which I custom painted, by the way. As you can see, I mounted the fork and the handlebar. It's just temporary mounted without the headset in there. So I'm just gonna use this tool here this here to uh, to make a little scratch to know where to cut okay i have mounted the fork into this uh, saw guide i have made a new line three millimeters below the original line that we draw on the bike that is in order to squeeze the fork into place with the top cap so uh, now i'm gonna cut it now I'm gonna go extremely gentle here just to get as fine and gentle cut as possible. I want it to be really smooth edges. I'm pretty much not putting any pressure on at all. I'm just letting the saw rest with its own weight on top of the blade and just pulling. I'm now gonna mount the headset. We have the, the bigger lower bearing and the smaller top bearing. I'm gonna use this press fit presser to, to mount them in there and I'm also gonna apply some grease just to avoid some moisture getting in there. The fork, headset and handlebars are mounted. Nice and tight, looks great. I'm now gonna set out to do what I was supposed to do from the beginning and start to route the cables. Okay, I will start out with this outers because I think it's a little bit stiffer than the braking hose. So let's just get this one in there. It has this, uh, these little knobs on there. I'm gonna have to remove them to make it a little bit easier to work with. Now my first attempt, I'm gonna use the wire as a guide. So I'm gonna put it in here and root it out there. Guide the 
much as I can. Okay. First cable through. Won't be needing very much of this cable line. Something like that. I'm now going to root the hose. I hopefully will be successful with that. Okay, so I have now just pushed it in there. I used this little uh, hook to, to get it out there. So now I both have the hose and the uh, outers coming out here. And it looks pretty neat. So, something like that. I'm now going to cut the cables and get it done on the other side as well. Now before I cut the, the hoses, I'm going to measure out the length that I need so I don't cut them too short. I'd say something like that should do it. I'm going to use this hose cutter and very nice clean cut like that so we can continue on with the other layer. okay i have both the outers and the hydraulic hoses in place through the handlebars and i will now start to root them down the frame i will begin with the hoses because they're the ones taking most place and for the wires i need to prep a little bit more so let's begin with the one in front it's going to be quite easy pc just shove it down there and pretty much in place i will make final adjustments later on and then we have the rear brake that goes down this hole and we'll simply just push it down there let's see I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name, check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain, I ingest, I retain, assess and I change, possessed by the thought I'll be free one day from society's restraints, money. So we're just gonna let the excessive hose hang around there for a moment. Okay, we're now gonna continue on with the wires for the derailers. As I said before, we need a starting point, and in this case, it's the levers, because the wire will go through the lever, through the outers, through the handlebars through the frame and out to the derailers. I have these uh, Shimano 105 levers, very nice, neat. Okay, so the uh, the levers are mounted, just temporary, but pretty much where they were gonna sit later on. And as you can see, I have mounted the front derailleur cable, at least the outer, and it's housed in there. I'm now gonna do the, the other side as well to show you how it is. It's a bit tight, but I have found my way around to, uh, to get it in there. I'm gonna start with cutting off. You can see it's quite rough on the front here. I'm gonna cut that, make a nice, a nice cut. And then I will put this little cap on to get it fit in there. And then we're gonna fit it in to this little hole here. So just gonna cut this one. Nice cut there. I'm gonna take this pick of mine, make sure that the line is nice and open. We'll put this one on. I will then use this to force it on there so it doesn't fall off. This is kind of tight and the outers are kind of stiff. I got a little way of doing this and that is to release the lever and sort of then guide it in there like this. And then I'll put the lever back in place. It's a lot easier than to bend the outers. So here we go. The levers are attached to the adders. We're gonna continue on with rooting on down. The next step is to measure out how long the housings will need. We want it as short as possible, but still without affecting the steering. Pretty much if we hold it like this, we want it to be able to turn all the way without it being stretched. Uh, something like that, that looks good. And then we have the other side as well. We want it to be able to steer like this, something like that. Okay, now we're gonna continue on with actually routing the cable. So I'm just gonna start with the front derailleur. I will thread this through here. I've made sure that it's on the, on the smallest sprocket in the front. And I thread it through. That's it. We will now have some help from the pre-installed routing tubes. So we're gonna take this uh, shifter cable and just fiddle it in there until we hear it uh, scrambles down there. Here we go. We'll now remove the, the routing. And then we're gonna route it down through the hole in the bottom. This is the guide that we have in the bottom to get a smooth and nice line for the cable, like that. 
and we're gonna have to remove it once again for the for the rear derailleur but and then you get the and there we go and then we will finally route the cable in there and it's done okay so I have uh, switched the bike around and I will do it now to the other side as well And the cable routing is done. I'm not gonna fit the wheels, although I'm not gonna fit them to the bike just yet. It's always nice to have them mounted because sooner or later I'm gonna wanna put the bike down on its wheels. Now before I, I tape it, I clean the bead just to have it really nice and clean. I use some uh, washing alcohol just to, to clean it off like this. Okay, so I take the valve hole and I start about 15 centimeters above it, something. The tape is on place. I think it's gonna be very good. So let's continue on with the tires. <whistles> nice. <sighs> Love that smell. But before we can mount the tires, we're gonna find the valve hole and put the valve in. Right there. I will then take my valves. Beautiful ones in gold, of course. And I'm gonna continue poking this hole. Something like that. Putting the O-ring on. And then the washer. Something like that. Okay, so the, the valve is in place. I'm not gonna continue on with the, with the tire. Now, if you've seen me building my gravel bike, you know I had kind of a hard time with the Continental Gravel Kings that I put in that one. Let's see if these ones are just as, uh, <laughs> just as nasty or if they're a little bit easier. We're gonna find the rotation direction, which is here. Line up the logos. Let's go, yeah. I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine. If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine. I'ma stay in power for a long time. Okay. We're getting there. I'm a really big hitter. Big picture. I'm a straight. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that took about maybe 10 minutes, quite much faster than the uh, Continental again. <laughs> I'm very satisfied with that. Okay, I'm not gonna put the sealant in for that. I'm gonna open up the valve like this. Then I will take this uh, bottle of sealant. I've shaken it well, you should do that too. It says 60 to 80 milliliters per tire. This one on there. like that should do it let's put the valve back in there then we will rotate the tire like this to make sure we get some in there and then we're gonna inflate it now I'm using this this special uh, air tank to uh, make sure that we can uh, pop the, the tires doing this with a regular pump like this is very tough because it doesn't have the power it takes so let's see if we can make it happen didn't hear a pop but I can see that the beads are in place nice so that's the first tire I'll now carry on with the other I will now finalize the wheels by mounting the rotors and the cassette. 
driving at night, windowless ride, feeling alive. I remove the spacer because this is a 10 and 11 speed hub and this one is for the 10 speed cassettes and this one is an 11. Oh yeah, we'll make it tonight. Yeah. I'll do anything that I feel like I wanna do. I'm living life like I got nothing left to prove. The wind inside, just always staying on the move. I'll go all night if that's just what I gotta die. There we go. I'm not gonna mount the brake calipers and since I have 140 rotors on this one, I don't need any wash or anything on the rear brake and I'm gonna turn this one the way it is, 140 millimeters up. So let's keep going. Okay, the bike is switched around and I will now mount the front trailers. I'm just gonna let it sit there. Final adjustments will be made later. Okay, continuing on with the rear mech. It's easy to get confused. This one have two little pins here, very short but small pins. And then you have this heel here. Both of those pins are gonna be above that heel. So it's easy to get confused and put them like this because it looks like it's supposed to sit like that but it's actually gonna be much higher than that. So make sure you get that right. Now I'm gonna measure out the length of the outer that's gonna go between the frame and the derailleur. There was one included in the derailleur pack. I'm not gonna use it because I want the same outers as I use up front, but I am gonna use this one as a template for how long I want it to be because that's easy. Just gonna cut it like that. I've been dreaming not in my head like I've seen it. A life worth living is a life with meaning. I'll do what I love till my heart stops beating. I'm feeding this demon. And then the final step, attaching the wire to the drill. I need a break. Time to stay strong. Need to move on to be what I want. I'll keep dreaming on. Time to stay strong. Need to move on to be what I want. It's alive. Perfect. I'm not going to install the hydraulic hoses and attach them to the lever and to the brake caliper. I have prepared it here with a, with a, little, with a nut and the olive. I'm going to insert this little silver pin into the hose. Then I'm going to insert it into the lever. But I'm going to begin with cutting the hose so that we have a nice fresh cut with no problem here. So let's get going. Hey, on when I chase like that. Yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm a ride or die for my dreams on tap. I'm a fly real high, you ain't see me slack. I'm a snide, how you fall, how you get right back up. This how you get tough. Calluses on my hands so rough. Yeah, I call your bluff. I'm not the one. Mess with me, come down with none. Cause I'm so done, you had your fun. And now you're gonna face down the barrel of the gun. Okay, I'm not gonna tighten this with the spanner. And it's gonna crush the olive in there and seal the whole thing. Something like that. And that's the front. Continuing on in the rear. And here I have the excessive hose. I'm gonna put a little bit of hose back into the frame so that we have a little bit of slack. I don't want it too tight. And then I'm gonna cut it about here. Something like that. And that means that we have a little bit of slack on the hose. If we wanna change any position on the handlebars or anything like that, it's not completely fixed. And then I attach the bolt, olive, and the little pin. There we go. And we repeat the process up front. It's now time to put some oil into the system. 
as you can see, the blinds are in place and I'm now going to insert mineral oil into the system so that we can have some braking power. So I have prepared here a little bit. I have peeled off the hood of the, of the front part of the lever and I have also inserted a little bit of a, a rag here just in case I, I do tend to spill some mineral oil out on the lever. I'll then take a two and a half millimeter Allen key and loosen up the bolt here. It's not very tight. Just open it up and put it to the side. I will then insert this funnel, remove the little pin. Yeah. Close call. <laughs> I might grab a bat, I don't know my wrath, my blood boils over like, oh god, here okay, Good, no air bubbles in the hose. I will now attach it to the bleed port. So have you ever felt betrayed? Switch is how you see things, realize something needs Something like that. And we'll take this 7 millimeter spanner and open up the bleed port. Enough is enough. And then we push it. Pushing very gentle to make sure that nothing snaps on the way. Can get loosened here and stuff like that. Pushing it through and now I think I can see some red liquid coming up here. Yep, that means that we have filled the system up. No bubbles coming up. Okay, I carry on and close the little valve here. Something like that. And when you put the screw back on, make sure that you use the flat-headed part of the Allen key, not the rounded, because this bolt is very easy to round, so just something like that. And that should do it. I will carry on and install the brake pads. Time for the next scary part of this project and that is to insert the bottom bracket. This is a Shimano Ultegra SMBB7241 bottom bracket which is a press fit. So it's got a left and right side and I'm now going to press it in there. I got this press fit tool again that I used on the headset that we're going to use so uh, wish me luck. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do. Okay, so I'm installing them by hand first to make sure that they are fitted in there and it looks pretty good like that. So I'm now going to insert the the tool. Take into your hands a plan, your own hands can land your own brand and damn. I feel like no one takes accountability, they want the credibility. And then I'm just gently pushing it in there. Don't be fucking sour, take a cold shower, scream until you're louder, work until you're prouder, and fuck all the doubters. They're just fucking Well, that went as good as it could, nice and straight. I will now continue on with mounting the chain set. I'll apply a little bit more grease. Can't have enough grease on this stuff. And there we go. Looks good. I won't stop till I wear the crown. Right. The cranks are in place. Okay, as you can see, I have mounted the rear wheel because it's time to mount the chain. And I have also removed the front derailleur because at the moment it was just sitting there and it will be in my way when I'm doing this. So I'm gonna fit this now. I don't have any chain as a guide, so I'm gonna have to measure it up for the proper way. What you bring, how you fight in the ring, how you take a fucking swing. Do you got heart? Are you mean? Got some scars? Got some needs? Are you willing to go bleed? I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown I'm pissed off at these fucking clowns 
Prove we're all taught they deserve it now. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown. I swear to God they don't let me down. There we go. Continue on on, and I'm gonna route the cable for the front radar. Okay, with the chain and the wires in place, I only have some finalization to do before this bike is ready for the road, so let's just finalize this, all right? Get so mad, there's no control in me. My thoughts get so bad, I'm like, I might grab a bat. I don't know my wrath, my blood boils over. Like, oh god, here goes. I lost all feeling from my head to my toes. You said some shit that I can't let go, so just stay tuned for the rest of the show. So, have you ever felt betrayed? Switch your style, you see things, realize something needs change. Cause I know you got me fucked up. Let me show you what's up. This has been an extremely fun project and I'm very excited about the results. The bike turned out great. I can't wait to take it out on the road. I'm gonna finish up with some close-up pictures. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in my next DIY bike project. Cheers.